Okay, we are now going to continue with a discussion of the concept of transfer. Uh, first, we are going to make a distinction between two types of transfer, and then we will proceed by discussing the uh, issue of conceptual change. First, we focus on two types of transfer. Uh, as it is already uh, shown here, we, we make a distinction between low road transfer and high road transfer, terms originally developed by Salomon and Perkins back in the 1980s. In order to understand the difference, it's easy to have a look at the so-called learning triangle. What you see here is that uh, you can go from one concrete experience to another concrete experience either by choosing the path along the base of the triangle that's the low road transfer path or you take the route along the vertex of the triangle and that's uh, the high road transfer route so low road means actually what we already have been discussing uh, practicing 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 in order to be able to apply what you have learned in the learning environment in any application environment uh, you choose. So applying knowledge uh, and uh, particularly skills requires a lot of practice. So that is basically the low road transfer route. Uh, the high road transfer route is more complex because in this case, and now we are talking again uh, about deep level learning, you develop uh, let's say models or schemata as it is called here in the in, in, in this uh, figure or 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 strategies which help you to to let's say uh, make the skill you have or the strategy you have learned uh, uh, detached from the learning environment in order to apply it in a variety of application situations um, so developing these kinds of models or st strategies um, also uh, fosters transfer. Uh, think of uh, devising a plan uh, to write a paper. You can uh, uh, develop such a plan after you have done your first paper or your first couple of papers. And then you can think of, let's say, how did I actually address this task did I, well, first I collected a lot of information, of course, then I made a sort of, you know, a, a plan, a, I composed a sort of outline of the paper, then I wrote down the paper, and then I sent it out for feedback, and then I revised the paper. So these stages of, let's say, collection of information, composition of an outline, writing and revising, well, these are the four stages I usually uh, uh, go through when I write a paper. Now, when I have to write a new paper, I can think of these four stages and I can make a plan, you know, uh, allocating time for each of the uh, four stages in order to complete the task. Okay, so that's a, an example of developing a strategy uh, which helps you to uh, apply what you've learned in one situation to other situations. Okay, we are now going to discuss in more detail the two types of transfer. First, uh, low road transfer. Back in the uh, uh, 19th century, teachers thought that uh, teaching uh, subjects like Latin and logic and mathematics uh, helped children and students to to think in a more rational, in a more sound way, in all kinds of application situations. So these formal disciplines, like Latin and logic, were supposed to provide a sort of transfer effect in all kinds of everyday situations where you have to reason. Now, unfortunately, this turned out not to be true. So Thorndike uh, uh, analyzed uh, this potential effect, the doctrine of formal discipline, and came to the conclusion that it could not, it does not hold, it's not true, in fact. So therefore he developed an alternative 
let's say, a view, a theory, and what, this, what he called the theory of identical elements. So his idea is that in order to be able to transfer a learned skill from a, a learning environment to an application environment, you, there need to be identical elements, similarities between the learning environment and the application environment. And these similarities uh, are required in, so to speak, to, 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 uh, to make transfer possible. Now, you can discuss, of course, what kind of elements uh, did Thorndike think of? Were they part of the task, for instance? Uh, or were they part of the environment, the temperature, or perhaps the color of the walls or whatever? Um, so, so th th there may be some sort of abstraction in the elements you, we are thinking of. Uh, Singley and Anderson, they did research on this uh, subject and they, they arrived at a sort of view that you may be able to write a computer program or, a f or let's say a representation of the task you're carrying out and the steps you have to take in the task and this, 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 this program, so to speak, determines uh, the, the, the elements which have to be identical in the learning environment and the uh, application environment. Uh, um, Singley and Anderson uh, exp uh, did some experiments with uh, the secretaries who worked with various uh, text editing programs uh, like Microsoft Word or a LibreOffice if you're working in a, in a Linux environment. And they uh, uh, trained these secretaries to do a particular task in, let's say, one uh, uh, environment. So let's say, let's, let's take uh, Microsoft Word. And then they had to learn the same, to apply the same task in a new environment, let's say LibreOffice or, uh, or another text editing program. And then they uh, measured how much time it took the secretaries to learn the, the task in a new environment compared with the original uh, task. And when the two text editing programs were very similar, it was quite easy to learn the, new, the task in a new environment compared with a situation where the two text editing, editing programs are completely different and you have to, you know, you, do, you have to do completely different uh, um, operations in order to complete the task. So the, the amount of similarity between the two text editing programs determined the amount of transfer, in fact. And that's how Singley and Adams and Anderson, uh, let's say, operationalized the idea of what identical elements are. Okay, then we can make a distinction to, between near transfer and far transfer. You can imagine again that the learning environment and the test and the application environments are quite similar and that it takes not much effort to, let's say, generalize the skill you have learned uh, in an application environment and apply it there. So then we have, we speak of near transfer. When you play a, a particular piece on the piano, uh, at home and then perhaps in the room of your teacher maybe the distance between these two environments is small and there is a, and it is quite easy to apply the, the the skill you've learned playing this particular piece in the room of the teacher then we have near transfer but if you have to play it you know uh, uh, on the stage of the Concertgebouw or any other uh, theater, then the distance might be quite large. Uh, and then we, we talk about far transfer. Um, so you can also think of, of problems, uh, mathematical problems, uh, where you have learned a particular, uh, uh, let's say, uh, strategy to solve these problems. Now you can imagine that you offer uh, all kinds of problems and that some problems are more complex or more uh, uh, elaborate uh, and therefore uh, it require a lot of effort to apply the particular solution methods in that in that environment and then we talk about far transfer so it, it's basically related to the idea of, of identical elements if there are many identical elements then we have near transfer if there are few identical elements we talk about far transfer Okay, now we are going to move to the high road transfer issue. 
Uh, what we see here are uh, three different routes in order to climb, you know, this this vertex of the tri learning triangle and and uh, and develop, let's say, abstract knowledge, uh, which uh, helps you to uh, to apply your skill or strategy in a new environment, in a new uh, concrete environment. Now, abstraction, of course, is the first step. So. Um, Building these schemata is basically the way in order to arrive at high road transfer, as I already uh, explained. Um, I, I gave the example uh, of the, 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 the strategy to write a paper. You can also think of uh, planning strategies, planning projects, or uh, strategies to carry out various tasks in a, in a, in a, in a particular order. Um, so these these strategies they are developed consciously, deliberately, purposefully, and they help you to apply what you've learned in one situation uh, in in a new situation in an application environment. Um, another strategy is not so much uh, developing. Uh, understand transfer strategies not so much developing a model or a strategy but it is uh, focused on uh, let's say detaching your your strategy from the environment in which you have learned decontextualization there's a very interesting uh, a series of studies done originally by Carl Dunker after the Second World War and then again with Gick and, by Gick and Holyoke, uh, who, who used the, the problem Dunker developed, the so-called tumor problem. I'll show you the problem. Uh, imagine that you have a tumor in your stomach, uh, and this tumor has to be um, uh, eradicated by applying x-rays. Now, the problem with these x-rays is that they kill all tissue um, uh, uh, along the way and on their path so to speak so if you have a tumor embedded in healthy tissue and you apply an x-ray then not only the tumor will be killed but also the healthy tissue around the tumor and that's not what we want we want only the tumor to be killed and not the healthy stomach which surrounds the tumor so that is basically the the tumor problem by uh, Dunker and, and, and the question is how are we going to solve this problem? There are solutions for it. Now if you ask uh, participants to solve the problem they will have a very hard time to finding the solution. But there is another uh, way to help them to solve the problem and that is by providing them another task. The task uh, is, is called by Gick and Holyoke the fortress task. Uh, imagine that you have a castle on the top, a fortress on the top of a hill, and the, there are various small paths leading to the top. Now, there's an army uh, um, at the bottom of the hill, and the army is supposed to, to, to capture the, the, the castle. But the army is not able to choose a particular path because it, it simply is too small uh, it doesn't allow for all the soldiers to, to, to take it. So, what does the general do uh, solving this particular problem? Now, the general knows that there are various ways up to the castle, and the general distributes his army uh, over the various paths, and these, the soldiers take these various paths, and, and then they meet uh, at the top of the hill, and then they capture the castle. So you can make a picture of this uh, strategy, so to speak. So we, we approach, the general approaches the castle through various paths, which are uh, by themselves small, but they uh, allow all, st all soldiers to go up um, because they take these various different paths and meet at the top of the hill. Now, if you offer this problem to participants, they will be able to solve it. And if you, after this problem, offer them the tumor problem, then they will may, they'll, then they more easily come up with solutions, and these solutions all use uh, not one X-ray apparatus, but 
two or three X-ray apparatus, which uh, direct their X-rays from various angles uh, towards the tumor. So the tumor will be attacked from a various ways, let's say two or three ways, and the X-rays meet, so to speak, in the tumor, where they are able to kill the tumor without damaging the healthy tissue uh, on the way to the tumor. So the X-rays are weak uh, X-rays, unable to kill uh, tissue unless they are combined, and then their added, let's say, power uh, will enable will will in, indeed kill the tissue, which is uh, the, uh, which is the tumor. Okay, so that is a solution for the tumor problem. There's, there are other solutions, but this is one of the solutions. Um, and the interesting thing is that when you offer uh, participants first the fortress problem and then the tumor problem, you will see that many more participants are able to solve the tumor problem, particularly when the, the experimenter uh, uh, instructs the, the participants to use the fortress problem and the solution of the fortress problem to solve the tumor problem. So when they are actually also primed to do that, they are indeed successful in solving the tumor problem. Now, this priming effect is in fact the decontextualization effect we were talking about. Um, because the, the instruction to use the solution of the, the fortress problem actually um, entails that students decontextualize that solution take it from the fortress problem and apply it in the tumor problem. And then we arrive at high road transfer. So the solution strategy is uh, learned in one situation and is applied in a new situation, the tumor problem. And the instruction to, to decontextualize helps students to, to bridge the two uh, problems, so to speak. Okay, then there is the third a way to um, to uh, foster uh, high road transfer and that is promoting access to knowledge. That is an approach which was developed by Pravat in 1989 and he suggested that, that, that increasing the coherence of a particular body of knowledge, for instance a, 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 your knowledge about a particular uh, phenomenon and the, the explanation and the theories and the concepts about, around this phenomenon um, that helps you to to develop uh, to apply this this knowledge for instance we are now talking about transfer we, we make a distinction between two types of transfer and I offered you the, uh, the the image of the learning triangle now this image might serve as a sort of key idea as a sort of organizing idea, which helps you to remember that there are two types of transfer, low road and high road, because there are two ways in which in this learning triangle you, 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 you go from one uh, base point to another base point, to the left corner and the right corner, the co left concrete experience and the, the right concrete experience. So the learning triangle is, is, is a key idea, is an organizing principle it creates coherence in, this, in, 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 in these facts and concepts and theories and it helps you to apply your knowledge in a new situation in which, for instance, somebody is asking how do we help children to what well, they have learned in the learning situation to apply that in a, in a, in a, in a new situation, in an application situation. Okay, so this is an, a way to promote access to knowledge. So you, you actually organize the knowledge in a better way, therefore it's better accessible. You could also, of course, ask students actively to develop these ideas to, to, to inductively create this abstract knowledge and also this instruction to verbalize, to write down what they have done uh, in a particular learning environment may help them to apply what they have learned in an application situation. So these are all ways to promote access to knowledge and help uh, students to, to arrive at high road transfer. 
Okay, now we have discussed two types of transfer um, and uh, we are able, I think, to proceed to the next um, unit in this module.